got another Carrie Stevens creamer here for you today. This is the Green Drake. I like this fly. I like the coloring, the dark coloring, the greens and the blacks go together very well. But I also like the shoulder on this, which is Gadwell flank or Gadwell feather, I think. Anyway, it is a very handsome fly. I like the coloring. I'm a big fan of grizzly materials or alternating banding high contrast materials. So it would be interesting to see you know, how this does in the water. That's the green drake. I'll get started time. I'm going to start the green drake with my hook already in the vise. This is a Mustad CS15. Sorry, this is a Partridge CS15, not Mustad. It is a 10x long streamer hook a, and it is a size 2. I'm going to go ahead and debarb the hook. Now, I've already attached my thread and run it down for a base layer of thread underneath here. And I am using white because the body on this is orange floss. This is a Wopsy 140 denier in white. That's just going to help me to get from one end of the hook to the other a little bit quicker. Now there's no tail on the green drake, so we can actually just tie in our tinsel for the tip and the rib. And I'm using a Danville Mylar silver and gold tinsel in a size 12. It is silver, so I'm going to tie this in with the gold side up. And I'm going to run my thread down on top of this to just past the point of the hook and then back up again. And give me a nice secure level base for the tip on this. And then I'll get back about where I started, which may be about a fifth of the way, not quite a quarter of the way down the hook shank. This is where I'm gonna put in the floss body. Floss is a, I'm using a Danville four strand rayon in orange. I'm going to tie this in and rather than in some videos I've actually had the floss run the whole length of the body. This I don't think is going to give me as pronounced a bump. So I'm going to just tie that in and leave maybe about a quarter of a shank or something in there to flatten out. I'm going to bring my thread forward to just behind the eye. My tie-in spot, I want to try and keep these in touching turns to keep that pretty level, fairly smooth. You can flatten your thread out when doing this, and it will help to cover the hook shank a little bit quicker. Nice thing is with the no tail on this, I don't have to attach the tinsel, put in the tag or tip, then cut it off, put in a tail, reattach it for the rib. I can actually apply the tag on the end and the rib all in one procedure. So I'll get my thread up to this end and I will apply the floss body. And then I will take the tinsel and put in 
the tag and then open it up when I've covered that whole area to put in the rib. of these feather wing streamers it's not important how many wraps of the ribbing that you have in as much as it is that they are evenly spaced so if you want fewer wraps fine just you know spread it out a little bit but just make them all evenly spaced so i have the tag and the body and rib all in place. There is a under wing on this as well as a belly. The belly is some white bucktail. The head on this when it's finished is a black head with a red stripe, no, excuse me, an orange stripe. I'm going to at this time go ahead and attach my orange. I'm using a uh, uni thread AO and orange. And this just is going to allow me to get a nice base of orange in the entire head so that when the time comes and I finish this off, I can actually put two black bands in it. So it will look, for all intent and purpose, it will look as though it's all black with an orange band. But as I've mentioned in other videos, if I do this all in black, and then put the orange on there afterward the orange will be much darker so this just keeps that orange color a little bit more vibrant i'm going to tie in the belly on this as i said it's just some white bucktail i've already selected some you want it fairly sparse it doesn't have to be real thick you can stack this if you want. I prefer to just kind of fiddle with it and, and get the barbs or excuse me, the hairs pulled out and kind of evened up. I like the more tapered look. I'm going to put this in the full length of the wing and everything. So this is going to extend about three eighths to a half an inch beyond. And anchor that in and then I'll trim away the excess. Before I put the throat in, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up towards the eye here. This anchors down the uh, bucktail so it doesn't accidentally start moving around and pulling out on me. The throat on this is some white hackle. I'm using some white schloppen for this. I've got three clumps already picked out here and processed. 
I'm going to tie this in so it goes down about halfway down the hook shank. Take my next clump, placing it on the side here. Put one hair there. If I can't get that out of there in a minute. Same length, but I'm going to have it up on the side of the hook. What this does for me is it helps to cover up the thread on the hook right here. However, since it's orange thread, I don't think it's as critical. I think if it was all black, it would be a, a little bit more of a factor. But I'll take my next clump or my last one. I'll put it on the side here on the other side. If you want, you can make each of these clumps actually a little fuller. It's up to you. I have yet to find much more information on it other than this is how I think how Carrie Stevens constructed her throats on her flies. Now I'm going to smooth this area off, lashing down all the butt ends of that schloppen, and this will then be the foundation for the underwing, which is some peacock curl, and then my wing. I said the underwing is just some peacock curl. It's four to six strands of peacock curl. I've already selected these, and you're going to tie these in the same length as your belly. These are a little bit thinner off of a feather. So you could tie some in that are a little fuller if you want. It's up to you. I think it still works very well. Now we're going to be ready for the wing. The wing on the green drake is a black hackle topped off by a green hackle that's a little bit shorter. And then there's a gadwell feather that's tied in as a shoulder. And then there's a jungle cock that is the cheek. I selected my um, feathers here based off the picture from the Hilliard book, and the shoulders pretty much went down almost about three quarters the, the length of the whole body. I'm going to tie this one in first so that you can see it. And I'm going to put about a dozen wraps on here, more or less to secure it enough. I see you don't want to, as you start to wrap on that, you don't want to really pull and torque down on your thread because you can get the whole um, wing kind of getting at an off angle. So I get about a dozen wraps to secure that. Then I'm going to put the other one on. And these are tied not right on the side of the head space. I'll show you here in a second. I've pointed this out in a number of different videos. Yep, and these are not directly on the side of the head right here. And they're not on top. They're actually up in this upper uh, quadrant, upper, upper quarter of the head. That way they get lashed in and they run pretty much down the length of the hook.
Now I'll cover all of that up and smooth this off with the orange thread. And then I'll take my black 6 aught Danville and put in the bands. Put in a lip finish. And that is the rest of my use for the orange thread. Checking this, making certain it didn't get twisted somewhere in there in that process. Usually it doesn't, but sometimes. It does. So I'm going to use some 6 aught Danville in black for the bands on this. The band of orange is generally um, about one third the length of the head. So you've got a third of it is black, then a third of it is orange, and uh, the last third is going to be black again. Imagine you could shorten that up, that orange up a little bit if you wanted to, but I find it's just as easy to divide it into thirds. Little lip finish there. I'll reattach right behind the eye of the hook. Just take your time with it. You might have to unwrap a wrap or two here or there. It kind of wanders off on you. If you want, you can flatten your thread out if that's going to help to get that a little smoother, a little easier for you. Give that a look-see. Yep, I got all of it. Bring my thread back to the back of that black band. Now I'll flatten it out and another whip finish. Most of these Carrie Stevens streamers like this end up with a little bit more of a pronounced head to them. That's part of the nature of the beast with the all the hackles you've tied in there and everything else going on. So I'm going to get some head cement on this and then I'm going to put some clear lacquer on it. That clear lacquer will, a couple coats, will smooth it off and brighten it up just a little bit. 
it'll pretty much look kind of like it does right now with that head cement on there just kind of soaking in. So there is the green drake. That was a handsome little fly with a gadwell flank in the in the shoulders there. I like the colorings on that if you're looking for like a nice dark almost like an emerald shiner kind of bait fish pattern. I think it would work pretty well. So there's the green drake. Thanks for watching today. Thanks for joining me at the Vice today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern, if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comments section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help Dressed Irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong.